weight. And keeping it off is often far more challenging. And what I've noticed over more than 35 years of helping people with their weight problems is that people tend to become obsessed with the scales. And that is often the demise of them because they will give up prematurely if they see that they're not losing any weight. Now, what we really need to do is look much deeper than our weight and the scales and look at the causes that keep us overweight. You know, when you look at some of these causes, they're very, very hidden. It's a bit like an iceberg. You know, people just see the tip of the iceberg. Oh, I'm overweight. You know, the scales are so high. I look terrible. And they think that's the problem. But there's a lot of hidden causes beneath the surface. It's like an iceberg. And the most common hidden cause is that of Syndrome X, which I'm going to explain later on, which is really a chemical imbalance that makes your body store fat. There's also your thyroid gland. If that's sluggish or even slightly out of balance, that will make it much harder for you to lose weight. Imbalances in your sex hormones, yes, that too can cause a lot of problems with your metabolism. Sluggish lymphatic function, adrenal fatigue, a negative self-belief system, food intolerances, low levels of fitness, imbalances in the hunger hormones. And we could go on. So no wonder diets don't work. Indeed, 95% of people who lose weight on a diet will put it back on. So over many years I became aware of all these different causes of weight excess. And some of them really were quite subtle. Quite subtle and things you would only find if you really went looking for it. And to go looking for it, you had to understand really on a deeper level about metabolism. So that's why I developed the Weight Loss Detective Program. Because I thought, yeah, I have become a detective. You know, it, uh, you've, you really have to be like Sherlock Holmes and go looking deep to find these causes. So my Weight Loss Detective Program looks for all the missing parts of the jigsaw puzzle. And believe me, if there's just one or two parts missing, that makes all the difference. You don't have the overall picture. So you really won't know where to concentrate. You won't have a strategy. So this is why I love the program. It makes it much easier for people to lose weight and to keep the weight off. You know, there's no magic pill for losing weight. It would be great if there was, but there is no magic pill. Uh, we really need to look at the interaction of all the factors that can slow down our metabolism, such as getting older, emotional stress, imbalances in brain chemistry, incorrect food choices. It goes on and on. And this is what we are all about, is finding every possible cause for you. You know, over the years, I've seen countless women who have matched their intake of food or calories rigorously with the amount of calories expended in exercise and body maintenance. And these women usually become very frustrated. I see a lot of them and they're often very depressed and confused because they think that they have an inability to lose weight. They're doing something wrong and they feel like a failure. So I say to them, look, people often call me the last resort don't feel like a failure, don't feel hopeless. My Weightless Detective Program will find several causes that are sabotaging your best efforts to lose weight. It really, really is that important. Otherwise, you're not going to be successful in the long term. So, I thought we'd start by looking at the major organ of metabolism. And to help us get understanding that, 
I have a guest today, naturopath Margaret Jasinska, and she is an expert in syndromex, fatty liver, metabolism, and all those factors that interact on our weight. So it's great to have you here today, Margaret. Thanks, Dr. Kippo. It's great to chat with you. Yes. And um, it, look, it really is a relief to have someone like Margaret to be able to help us uh, because the amount of research you do is stunning. You know, you're, you've dedicated your whole life to reading about nutritional medicine and researching it. And, you know, it's just wonderful to have you as a resource. Thank you. There's such interesting topics and it's really great to have more knowledge because that way we can help more people. Yes. That's right. You can do the homework. <laughs> well, I do a lot of research too, but you know, um, I just really love the things that Margaret comes up with. So, if we can talk about the liver, um, you know, I, I have been researching the liver for a long, long time. You know, the liver is the major organ of fat metabolism. It pumps fat out of your body through the bile. It maintains your blood sugar levels. And yet we see today that fatty liver has become an epidemic. Yes. And as, why do you think that is? Uh, the average diet is really quite high in carbohydrate and the average diet has quite a bit of vegetable oil, such, such as margarine and, and processed vegetable oils. And it's, it's quite normal to eat a lot of carbohydrate in today's society, such as um, breakfast cereals, bread, pasta, pastries, potatoes, sugar. A lot of people can cope with that when they're young, they can maintain a slim body weight, yes. but usually those carbohydrates catch up with people when they get older. And as we all get older, we start to become more insulin resistant. So we start to gain some weight around the middle of our body, around the tummy, around the torso, and fat can start accumulating in the liver. Yes. Some people are genetically more prone to that than others um, because of their body type. Some people are more prone to that. But fatty liver is certainly common these days. Yes. And, you know, something interesting too um, about fatty liver is it's not able to get rid of toxins from the body as efficiently uh, because, you know, the fat's built up and it's damaged the fat cells. So what role would poor detoxification in the liver have in increasing our weight and making it harder for us to lose weight? Well, most of the toxins in our body are fat soluble and so they tend to accumulate in our body fat yes. and all the toxins in our body go to our liver where they should be changed into another form that where they can then be excreted. But if fat is accumulating in your liver, well, that's a bit of a magnet for toxins. They're drawn there to the liver, and mm. that compromises the ability of the liver to detoxify your bloodstream and also compromises its ability to burn fat. Yes. And once toxins accumulate in your body, well, they, they promote fatigue and mm. fluid retention, um, yes. foggy head, aches and pains, generally making it much harder to eat well, exercise, it just a compromised liver function really reduces the quality of your life. Yes. And, you know, I, people often complain, you know, of cellulite. So they'll have a lot of cellulite in their thighs and, you know, a lot of puffy fat on their body that just won't budge. And that fat holds toxins, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And do you think a good detox of the liver and the fat tissue can help with weight loss? Yes, absolutely. We see it all the time. Yes. And with cellulite, there's often fluid retention. There's a weakness in the connective tissue as well. Um, there's often a hormone imbalance. Women who um, are estrogen dominant have too much estrogen relative to progesterone are more likely to get cellulite. The gynoid body type that you write about yes. is more likely to get cellulite. Yes. And, mm -hmm. you know, you can reverse cellulite. I'm sure you need exercise. That's important. Hmm. Very important. Um, but I think a good detox helps and uh, I know uh, you've um, helped me to write a book on um, detoxing, it's called The Ultimate Detox and it's a two week detox so it's not too difficult, <laughs> it's not like it's eight weeks or twelve weeks, it's only two weeks but it works, it's on a really deep level because it's targeting the lymphatic system, the liver and the gut and what would be the essence of that in a nutshell, Margaret, your ultimate detox? Well, it's largely about getting rid of substances that 
promote toxicity in your body. So the diet excludes sugar and dairy products and gluten, as well as things like caffeine and alcohol. So it's a really good deep cleanse it's mm. quite a restrictive diet but it doesn't last too long so it's manageable mm. for the average person you can generally stay motivated for two weeks yeah and it's, it's a great kick start as well so after people have done the detox and they've felt a lot better they tend to become a lot more aware of their diet and the motivation stays with them to eat well and look after themselves yes I agree I think the detox is great and you know you see a lot of people who are not just overweight but they're very tired they're bloated they're very toxic and they have a lot of inflammation in the bowel so you know all our recipes are good for the liver um, they're cleansing uh, they're also good for the intestines so you know you can go on a, a, a effective weight loss diet but it may be uh, ineffective as a detox it may not help the liver so our eating program is taking into account detoxing and cleansing the liver and that's going to help to get rid of cellulite so I thought maybe we'd just talk about the metabolism of fat for a little while because, you know, that's what people want to lose. They don't want to lose their lean muscle. Uh, they want to lose fat, particularly unsightly, puffy fat, cellulite or deposits of fat where you don't want them. And what are those fatty tissues made of? You know, we call it adipose tissue, but what's actually made of? Triglycerides, basically. So the main storage form of fat in your body is triglycerides. Yes. And you know, a lot of people think, well, to get fatty tissue, namely triglycerides, I have to eat a lot of fat. But that's a fallacy, isn't it? That's right. Not mm. at all. You can be on a, a fat-free diet but still gain a lot of weight. Our liver is very good at manufacturing fat, yes. particularly from sugar and starches. Mm. So, and when you think of farming practices we can fatten up cattle by feeding them grains and we can yeah. do the same to human beings that's right so you know your liver is very good at making fat it's a process called lipogenesis and so it makes triglyceride out of fatty acids and glycerol and most of it will come from carbohydrate so that's why I'm not a lover of um, you know the the low fat diet foods because they're generally too high in carbohydrate absolutely and sugar and, and so research has shown that the more carbohydrate you eat, the more triglycerides your liver will produce. Yes. And the and unless you're an athlete, the average person just doesn't need that amount of carbohydrate in their diet. So yes. it's going to get stored. Yes, as fat. Yeah. And cellulite. And as a fatty liver. So you'll end up with a liver that's very greasy and can be a bit enlarged and swollen with fat. And Margaret, what kind of fat is in the liver? Is it going to cause any problems, that fat? Is it toxic, that fat? Yes, it is, because the, the kind of fat that gets stored in the liver and also around the abdominal organs is a lot more harmful than the type of fat that you might get on your thighs or on your triceps. Yes. The, the fat that's in the liver and around the abdominal organs, around the internal organs, See, fat cells don't just sit there and rest. They don't just sit there and do nothing. They continually secrete a lot of substances. We, yes. we refer to fat tissue as an endocrine organ, as a hormone producing organ. Yes. If you have a lot of fat cells, they're going to be making a lot of hormones. And it's all the wrong hormones yes. and inflammatory chemicals. Yes. So those, those chemicals create inflammation throughout your body. So it's really like a lot of wear and tear and free radical damage in your body? Yes. And I remember you said to me something one day that really stuck in my mind, and that is, I've just read this fascinating article, Margaret says that about three times a day, um, and it talks about the fat in the liver as being rancid. And I said, oh, wow, that doesn't <laughs> sound good. So please explain how you can have a rancid fat in your liver. Yes, that sounded terrible. So, <laughs> that, so the fat in your liver has actually gone off and it's mm. inside your body and that's what's mm. the thing about fatty liver is that the fat takes place of normal healthy liver tissue it, it yes. tends to in, invade the liver like cancerous cells can invade an organ yes. and so if you've got fat in the liver and those fat cells have been making inflammatory chemicals which damage the fats in the liver mm. well in, in effect you've got off rancid fat mm inside you. Oxidized fat in your mm. liver and mm. that's going to cause a lot of inflammation and that will make it harder to lose weight. 
Definitely. And, and inflammation. And yes. And That's why I love detoxing, you know, and I love juicing. And I know you're not a big advocate of juicing, but when, when you're a thyroid body type, juicing's really good. But, you know, raw food. That's important, isn't it? Absolutely. Mm. It's just the sugary juices that, that I'm against. Yes. Whereas a lot of people who start juicing, they think, great, I'll juice things that taste really good, like apples, cal- uh, carrot, beetroot, and they're really quite sugary juices. And so for a person that has diabetes, that'll send their blood sugar high. Yes. So, you know, a lot of doctors haven't got a clue that the liver is a very strategic organ when it comes to weight control. They really don't think about the liver very much. I often say it's the forgotten organ. And yet, we really need to think about it more because if we get our liver working properly, that's going to help so much with our weight control and with our longevity. So we're going to look at some of the things we can do to spruce up our liver, to detox it, to get the fat out of the liver. And that is going to have enormous benefits on our health. So, you know, when we look at our diet, for the liver, I think we need to eat more raw food. Now, I know sometimes Chinese medicine doesn't agree with that, and that there's lots of different ideas. There's so many different ideas today, people get confused. Mm. But I've found in my patients, if they eat a nice big salad every day, um, and they eat some fruit every day, that will really help. But there are people who have problems digesting raw food, So what would you suggest for them? Uh, Usually it's only people with acute bowel problems that can have difficulty digesting raw salads. So ideally we want to fix their bowel problem so that they can eat raw salads. It's great to have a variety of vegetables in your diet. Some of them raw salads, others as cooked vegetables like soups and stews, because in some vegetables, the nutrients become more bioavailable once the vegetables are cooked. And in other vegetables, they're more nutritious when they're raw. So it's great to have a mix. And and also in a lot of vegetables, the antioxidants inside them, particularly the carotenoids and lycopene, those antioxidants are fat soluble. So you won't absorb them if you're not having some fat at that meal, which is a great reason to use a tasty salad dressing and dress your salad with extra virgin olive oil or cold pressed macadamia nut oil or organic coconut oil where it makes the salad a lot more filling and tasty and you're going to be absorbing the nutrients better and that's a good reason to cook carrots pumpkin and tomatoes and have some oil with the tomatoes that would help absorb the carotenoid antioxidants right yes exactly Yeah. yeah okay so look raw food's fantastic um if you have trouble digesting it you have to grate it finely or you can use a food processor like a A Vitamix, that's a good food processor. Yep. Yeah, which can make um, soups or chop things very, very finely, Mm great things, and that's going to help your digestion. You can have some apple cider vinegar. Yep. Sip it during the meal, that will help you to digest raw food, Mm, digestive enzymes, and your digestion will improve. Now, the other thing that's very good for your liver is a mineral sulfur, which is found in smelly food. So, what would you suggest (laughs) we do? I mean, I love garlic. I'm well known for smelling of garlic, but I'm, you know, my mother tells me off all the time. Um, but it just makes me feel fantastic. I love garlic, it's high in sulphur, but what other things can we do to boost the garlic? To boost the sulphur. You're right, yes, to boost the sulphur. Well, what other things can we do, Margaret, to boost the sulphur? Um, the smelly foods that naturopaths love. So uh, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, they're all rich in sulphur. Um, the onion family, onion, leek, shallots, spring onion, and there's also organic sulfur, a supplement called MSM, which is a natural form of sulfur that you Mm. can take to boost your intake. Yes. What about eggs? Yeah, that's right. Good Mm. point. Eggs are also rich in sulfur. Yes. And, you know, people often say, oh, eggs, but I can't have eggs. I've got high cholesterol. What do you say to that? No, you can eat eggs every day, and eggs never raised cholesterol. And studies have been done where people were fed about 16 eggs a day, which you wouldn't do, but their cholesterol did go down because the Mm. more cholesterol you get in your diet, the less your liver is going to make. So if you have a healthy liver, that will regulate your blood cholesterol level. People get into trouble when they have an unhealthy liver or they eat too much sugar, grains and starches, then their liver will make too much cholesterol. Yeah, it'll make the bad cholesterol. Mm, Exactly. Yeah, so eggs are good. Um, Now, 
What about the mineral selenium, if you have a fatty liver or a sluggish detoxification process in the liver? Selenium is fantastic because it's, it's highly anti-inflammatory. So it's a brilliant mm. natural anti-inflammatory. And anyone who's got a fatty liver has a lot of inflammation in their body mm. because as we mentioned, those, the fat cells within their liver are producing inflammatory chemicals. Yes. And selenium helps your liver to make glutathione, which mm. is a really powerful antioxidant in your body. It helps detoxify your body, really improving liver function and reducing your risk of cancer even. Yes, glutathione, yes. And, you know, selenium is essential for glutathione to protect your liver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so it's a great protector. And, you know, a lot of people who have a liver problem, also they have a leaky gut or an inflamed gut. And I find that you have to get the gut repaired as well as the liver. And Glutamine is a very helpful amino acid for leaky gut or inflammation. Do you agree? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Glutamine is an amino acid that's used as fuel for the cells that line our intestinal tract. So it helps the intestinal lining to repair itself and rebuild and, and basically makes your gut lining a tougher, better barrier, therefore reducing the absorption of toxins into your bloodstream from your gut because we've all got things in mm. our gut that are supposed to stay there like mm. wastes toxins bacteria things that mm. we that we need to get rid of yes. and people with an irritated or inflamed gut lining well they've got a leaky gut so if they've got a toxic bowel those toxins will seep into their bloodstream and they all head straight for the liver that's their first spot they go yeah and then you get an overworked liver and the liver has less energy to burn fat. So, you know, overload of toxins and inflammation coming from the bowel, as well as the bloodstream, can slow down your metabolism and lead to weight gain. So everything's related, you know, mm. nothing occurs in isolation. That's why we believe in naturopathic medicine, you know, holistic healing, it, it really is very scientific. Um, what about liver tonics? Do you think that they can help with uh, encouraging the fat burning processes in the liver? Absolutely. So there are some herbs. The most popular one of those is St. Mary's thistle, yes. which actually helps the liver cells to repair themselves, regenerate and protects liver cells from damage also. Mm. Because while your liver cells are detoxifying your body, which they do every day, uh, sometimes they get damaged in that process. Yes, and milk do. thistle helps to mm. protect that, protect yes. the cells from damage. Yes. And so people that actually already do have liver damage, such as raised liver enzymes, they're going to get much faster results with St. Mary's thistle. And yes. they'll feel better faster. Yes. And when you feel good, it's so much easier to stick with a healthy diet. That's so right. we, we want our patients to feel good as soon as possible. Um, then it makes the weight loss journey a lot less difficult. That's right. You want to see results. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. Yes. You won't get despondent then. Um, well, that's why we're weight loss detectives, you know. We look at everything, every little thing that we can find to make your results quicker and even far more importantly, to make your results last. That's so important. You want to keep the weight off long term. You know, I find that so many overweight people are very, very tired. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And I think that's because, you know, the, the healthy liver is the body's metabolic furnace. It generates the energy. Mm. And so if your liverish or fatty yellow liver, overloaded toxic liver, you're not generating that energy you need. That's mm. right. And life is busy and life is exhausting often for the average person because of the amount of things they've got to do each day. Yes. They have busy lives. Um, yes. If they're tired, it just makes eating well seem too overwhelming for a lot of people. That's right. It's just easier mm. to drive through the drive through and pick up a takeaway, isn't it? Yeah. If you don't have the energy. Yes. Yes. Um, but, you know, raw food's easy to prepare and, and vegetable soups, I mean, they're very healthy, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. What's your recipe for a good vegetable soup, Margaret? <laughs> Several of our liver. books. <laughs> There's a good uh, soup recipe in the Ultimate Detox book, yes. but just about all of our books, particularly the, the, the Diabetes book, the Syndrome X book, the Fatty Liver book, we've put a lot of easy, user-friendly recipes yes, in there. we have. Just to get you started. So you've got a good idea of, of the kind of things. And they taste really nice. You know, mm. there's a lot of natural herbs and spices that are yeah. very good for the liver.